The Toledo community protesting domestic violence. The National Great Lakes Museum cut a ribbon today. And we are tracking that rain for later this coming week. How much? We'll let you know. But we start tonight with the Toledo community rallying against domestic violence. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bill Horman. The annual Take Back the Night event comes just one day after a Connecticut boy stabbed a girl to death during a school in what could be considered an act of domestic violence. 13 ABC Senna Orr live from UT Scott Park with how organizers are trying to reach out to kids with tonight's Take Back event. Senna? Well, Bill, this is the 12 in South Toledo, Santa Aura, 13 ABC Action News. Now we have a photo we want you to look at. This is Amber Ridley. Her mugshot's been posted by Toledo Police on the department's Facebook page. She's 22 years old. She's wanted for felonious assault. Call Crime Stopper at 419-255-1111 if you can help find her or just send the police department a private message on their Facebook page. A special benefit in Fremont is remembering three people killed inside a bar back in March. Daniel Ramirez, Jose Chavez, and Ramiro Sanchez were all killed inside the last call bar. The gunman, Igmidio Mista, faces murder charges. This afternoon, family and friends are honoring the men. They're holding a benefit that runs until 9 o'clock tonight at the Glass City Boardwalk in Moline. The tickets cost $15, but all the money raised will go to the victim's families. You can also make a donation at Huntington Bank under the Chavez Ramirez Sanchez organization. One person was killed when she didn't stop at an intersection in Sandusky County. This is the spot where 69-year-old Judith Hansen drove into the path of a minivan. Both the driver and the passenger in the minivan sustained serious injuries. Four out of ten teens who have abused a prescription drug got that drug from their parents' medicine cabinet. At least that's according to the Ohio State Board of Pharmacy. So today was the eighth annual drug take back, which encourages people to get rid of unused, expired, or unwanted drugs. Hospitals, fire departments, police stations, they were all drop-off points today. Officers say keeping any type of drug in your medicine cabinet can be very risky. If these drugs are just uh, sitting in your home, your home could be broken into, the drugs could be stolen and uh, sold on the street. Now in past years, more than 3 million pounds of drugs have been collected by this event. Weather now warm and sunny today. Ross Zellett says we can expect a little bit more of that tonight and tomorrow. Ross? Yeah, that's we'll let you know in a few more minutes. Well, it is the newest museum in Toledo, and it opened today. It honors the rich tradition of the Great Lakes region. And 13 ABC's Mackenzie Keyline was there along the Maumee. One. Mackenzie Keyline, 13 ABC Action News. And you can find out more about the museum's hours and its admission prices by just getting connected to 13abc.com. 7,000 runners expected to lace up their running shoes for the 38th Glass City Marathon tomorrow. The 26.2 mile marathon and the half marathon and 5K all dedicated to firefighters this year. The event will start with a moment of silence. The Cowboys will be out in Toledo tonight at the Pro Rough Stock Series downtown. The one night performance will feature Cowboys competing in three different events, bareback riding, bull riding, and saddle bronc riding. The Cowboys with the highest score will be crowned Toledo Open champion. Now the Pro Rough Stock Series starts at 730 at the Huntington Center. Tickets are 15 bucks for adults, $8 for kids 12 and under. The special gold buckle seats those will cost you $35. Well, you won't see locomotives at the Sylvania train barn. The old barn has been transformed into a movie theater. It's part of the Tree City Film Festival in downtown Sylvania. That festival showcases locally made films, and it wraps up this evening. What I like about it is the films are great. It's good quality. I mean, it's really, really entertaining, and they're vastly different. Uh, last year, There's a showing tonight at 8 o'clock. Tickets are available at the door. All of the money raised benefits the Sylvania Arts Commission. This afternoon, Toledo celebrated its ties to cities all around the world. Today was the fifth annual Toledo Sister Cities International Festival, and this year, 23 ethnic groups performed for about 2,000 people who came out. Toledo has sister cities in Spain, China, Hungary, Poland, Egypt, India, and I was honored to MC part of that event today. The Toledo Zoo went a little greener today. Plus, plenty of volunteers out and about on this Saturday. It was all part of Rock the Block in Bowling Green. We'll tell you more about that.
This is 1380C Action News with Bill Horman. The Toledo Zoo made the earth a little greener today as part of the Party for the Planet celebration. Everybody was invited to drop off the recyclable goods, even the really hard to recycle items like electronics. Experts were also on hand to talk about how to be more eco-friendly. The zoo also collecting old blue jeans. This is part of 13-year-old Eric Hansen's Eco Eric annual campaign to save the environment. He's collecting 4,000 pairs of jeans and 4,000 pairs of shoes. I was reading this magazine and I saw an ad where I wanted to like collect jeans to like turn into insulation. So that was a good idea. So I like collected some of my own and that's kind of how Project started. Good for him. It's an effort to keep all those jeans and shoes out of landfills. Well, you've probably seen them driving around town, but should you pay for them? Welcome into Action News at 6. I'm Lee Conklin. And I'm Diane Larson. Murals are painted on the sides of more than a dozen buildings in Toledo. New at 6, why some say that art is good for the city. Bill Horman has that now. Bill. Lee, Diane, it used to be called graffiti. Some even call it street art. But there are others in this city who believe Toledo should not only sanction it, but should pay for it down to Adams Street and you'll find this wall art. It's eye-catching, colorful, sometimes confusing. Do you find these appealing as you see them all around town? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Councilwoman Lindsay Webb finds this art interesting, so much so she's proposing spending 15,000 taxpayer dollars on this sort of public art. This can help create synergy and revitalization along some of our neighborhood commercial corridors like Sylvania Avenue or like Summit Street. She believes businesses will see this art as a sign of vibrancy in an area and encourage them to stay or move in. And art advocates believe these paintings will help turn around blighted neighborhoods. Graffiti artists knowing that the city is investing in public art will encourage them to submit designs to murals rather than tag buildings illegally. This is Broadway, where you'll find a lot of murals up and down the street. They reflect the essence of the neighborhood. But the question is, should taxpayers fund this sort of art? This taxpayer likes the art. She just wants that money to go somewhere else. We need our roads fixed before we have art on the walls, I guess. Mayor Mike Collins agrees. He says the Toledo Art Commission will get $323,000 this year from the city. He believes the mural money should come from that fund. We can't have two independent art programs going on in the city of Toledo. But other taxpayers don't have a problem with Toledo drawing up new ways to save neighborhoods. There's a lot of taxpayers money going out in a lot of different areas and you know why not something to make our city look nice. Love, love, but does it love murals enough to pay for it? Mayor Mike Collins says, look, council, you can use your discretionary budget to pay that $15,000 expenditure. Council will consider this measure in a couple of weeks. Reporting live from downtown, Bill Horman, 13 ABC, Action News. Action, welcome to Action News at 5. I'm Christian Brown. And I, Bill Horman, Lee and Diane have this evening off. That gives us the opportunity to come down and enjoy opening day with the fans here at Fifth Third Field. We're in the uh, bottom of the, or excuse me, the top of the fourth. The bats are up two to nothing. The Louisville bats have a runner on second, but the game's far from over. Don't worry, Mudhens fans. We're going to be here for the next 90 minutes. We'll show you all the angles of opening day. We'll talk about... Um, the economic impact this day has on the city of Toledo. We'll talk to fans about their reaction that it's finally baseball season, despite the fact that it feels a little bit like winter out here. We'll also look at security down here at the ballpark, how police try to keep you safe as you bring your family down to enjoy uh, what is going to be a great season here. And it just begins, the home season begins today. We. Um, want to show you though some video from this morning because there was a little bit of concern about the weather rain and fog and now the wind this morning it was so foggy that schools across the area had to go on two hour delays and I'm sure baseball fans were scratching their heads wondering are we going to get opening day in well it's almost an official game Ross Sellett, and the wind is blowing straight to center field so we're probably in the combat zone right now we might get hit by a baseball but what's the rest of the evening looking like well, though, thankfully, the rain is now pushed on out of the area, Bill, so that's good. Anybody uh, in for tomorrow, those winds will be up for quite some time. Yeah, if it weren't for the wind, the temperature's bearable, but the wind sure. really makes it colder than it actually is. 
things. And we had that one little pocket of sunshine, Bill, when we came out here. That felt good for a moment, but the clouds have clouded back over. One moment. That's yes. all it lasted. That's all one moment. Was, yeah. Thanks, Ross. We'll see Ross a little bit later in this newscast as we're live here from Fifth Third Field. The first pitch was at 4 o'clock, but really the ceremony began at 3.30 this afternoon, and it was a very emotional ceremony as well. Let's show you some video from just about an hour and a half ago. The opening ceremony included a tribute to the two fallen Toledo firefighters. You can just imagine the impact that must have had on everybody who was here at the field. Remember, it was Jamie Dickman and Stephen Machinsky killed in the line of duty back in January. And as you see here, the community continuing to remember both firefighters and honoring them just before the game today. Well, what's happening today and what can we expect throughout the rest of the season? This is the first of about uh, 65, 70 games that the Mudhens are going to play here at uh, the third field, Dave. What can we expect from the team this season? It's a really interesting season, Bill, because you always see the new faces in AAA. You have players go up and down from Detroit several times throughout the course of the season. A lot of familiar faces, though, back. Larry Parrish, the man who last managed the scene to a championship, back in charge. He brought back Mike Hessman, the all-time home run leader for the Mudhens. He's back here playing third base today on opening day, so it's kind of cool to see the new faces and some names that people have remember over the years. Mike Hessman, he has a chance to break an International League home run record with the Mud Hens this season. Absolutely, very doable. He's a former MVP. About five years ago, he won the MVP in the International League, and he can crank him out of here, especially with the wind blowing today. A pop fly for Hessman could get over this wall, but he has a chance to really do something special. Already the team's all-time leader, but like you said, could shatter the IL record, too. And quickly, Larry Parrish back for the third time. Yeah, and it's interesting. He said uh, the other day, he said it feels like home to him. You know, we had a chance to talk to him. He said, hey, I'm halfway between Bass Pro and Cabela's. What, what could be better? He's a guy who loves to fish. He loves this area, so it's good to see Larry back. And he's working in the swamp. Absolutely. Right, Dave Holmes, thank you very much. Sports Director will be back with more highlights throughout this next 90 minutes. Obviously, you don't have a ball game unless you have a lot of fans who come to the ball game. They make the atmosphere. They make the players want to play. And uh, our Melissa Bates was out there today talking to the fans about why they wanted to be here.